Hello again. All right, so today we're going to cover uh, the female anatomy for reproduction. So we've done the male, and so now we're going to cover the female. It's a little more complicated than the male, I suppose, I guess. Um, so I've made a list of structures for you, and I apologize, my phone may ring. I'm waiting on a phone call, so I'm going to put you on pause. All right, so these are the structures that you need to learn. Um, so I'm going to go over these as we move through the uh, pictures. So I have a reference uh, picture for you with a lot of things labeled. So just so you know where we are, this is a female. And so you're looking at the rectum and the anus. So this is going to be the butt, okay? This is the front of the female. So you have the bladder and the urethra. So the reproductive anatomy includes the uterus and the vagina, okay? Uh, and the gonad of the female is going to be the ovary. So this white structure here is your ovary, and then it's going to have this infundibulum, or, uh, or I guess an infundibulum and uterine tube that kind of go from the ovary uh, to the uterus. So we'll go in detail on all these structures. I just wanted you to kind of know where we are. So we're down in the abdominal pelvic cavity of the female, and we're looking at the reproductive tract of the female, which kind of lies between the bladder and the rectum and anus, okay? So we're going to start from the outside and do the external genitalia, which includes the mons pubis, the labia majora, the labia minora, the vestibular glands, and the clitoris. So the mons pubis, I'm going to kind of flip back and forth. Uh, it's going to be a fatty area that overlies the pubic bone. So this fatty tissue right here is the mons pubis. You have uh, two labia, which is kind of a fancy word for lips, literally, uh, so coverings uh, of the the uh, female genitalia. You have the labia majora, which is kind of flesh colored, fatty skin folds, usually with hair. It's the counterpart of the male scrotum. And the labia minorum, uh, minora, which is kind of a more delicate uh, structure uh, that lies medial to that. So it's the, uh, actually it creates the, the opening into the vaginal, or the covering that kind of leads into the opening of the vaginal canal. Uh, we call this the vestibule, so the space between the labia minora is the vestibule. So let me go back. So this skin, kind of this fleshy skin area here is the labia majora, and then this pink fleshy area is the labia minora. And so the two labia minoras kind of uh, kind of stick together and kind of keep the, the vagina uh, kind of free from debris. So they're, uh, you can't see the other side on this particular model. Uh, and then you have the greater vestibular glands, which is analogous or homologous, I guess you would say, to the bulbo-urethral glands of the male. So they're going to be for lubrication. They're going to be right here. And then you have the clitoris, which is going to be uh, kind of a structure that's uh, very similar to the, um, the, uh, the penis. So very similar to the glands penis. It's made of very similar tissue. It, it uh, is able to... Uh, engorge and become erect during arousal. So that's going to be this blue structure right here. All right, uh, so the actual reproductive uh, gonads of the female are going to be the ovaries, and that's because they make the female gamete, or the ova, or the egg. They also are part of your endocrine system because they make estrogens and progesterones, which are hormones. And just like the testis, they have a covering called the tun tunica albuginea. All right, so the ovary is the actual gonad, and then you have accessory ducts uh, for the female, just like in the male. So remember we had the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles and uh, all those, those things that the guys have. Uh, the female has accessory uh, ducts as well and, and accessory uh, organs. So you have uterine tubes, which you probably have heard of as uh, fallopian tubes. You have a uterus and a vagina. All right, so what does this look like? So here is your vagina. Okay, which is going to be, if you go back, I'm just going to kind of keep flipping back and forth a little bit. It's going to be this uh, structure that enters in from the outside to the uterus. And so if you, in, if you look at the vagina, this is going to be here. It actually has this little, what we call blind pouches called fornices. Uh, this is uh, one of the places that, that sperm kind of get lost when they're trying to swim up and find, uh, find the egg. And so the vagina ends with the beginning of the uterus. And so the opening to the, this kind of uh, entryway into the uterus is called the cervix. So this kind of narrow neck region of the cervix is called the uh, uterus. It's called the cervix. The entryway into the cervix is called the external os. There's an internal os on the other side. So you can think of a cervix as kind of a narrowing with a canal through it. 
then you enter into the actual uterus. Then you'll notice the uterus has two branches off either side. These are your fallopian or uterine tubes on either side. You have kind of a, a, a um, kind of a fat area called the infundibulum of these uterine tubes, and it kind of ends with these little finger-like projections called fimbriae, and then you have your actual ovaries. And you'll notice that the fimbriae don't actually touch um, the um, ovary. They're kind of kind of uh, 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 kind of over the ovary, so they're going to kind of the fingers kind of sweep and try to catch the egg. So they're not actually in contact. So the ducts have no contact with the actual ovary. So that's how you can get an ectopic pregnancy. If the egg was to leave the ovary and not get caught by the fimbriae, it could just go out into the peritoneal cavity. Excuse me. Same thing. If sperm are coming up inside the female and swimming out of the uterine tubes, they actually can go out into the body cavity as well. But don't worry, um, women's immune systems will take care of that. So you have your fallopian tubes. Uh, some people call them uh, the uterine tubes, fallopian tubes, oviducts. Those are all kind of things that you'll hear. Um, and this is where the ovulated oocyte is going to uh, be delivered. So it's going to be, it's going to pop out of the ovary and be caught by the fimbriae and then go into the um, uterine tubes, and there's a little cilia uh, that will push that egg along from the ovary toward the uterus. And this is typically where fertilization occurs, okay? Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about the actual uterus and what it's for. It's a thick muscular wall. It's for uh, the place to receive and retain and flourish a fertilized ovum. It's where the baby's going to grow, all right? So it has uh, four main parts. You have the body, the fundus, the cervix, and the cervical canal. So if you look at um, basically this, this whole kind of major portion of the, um, of the uterus uh, is um, kind of an upside down um, pear shaped. Uh, okay, if you want to think of it like an upside down pear. So this rounded area is called the fundus. And of course, then you have, you know, the majority of the, of the uterus called the, the body. Then you have the cervix here, and then you have the cervical canal. All right, so the body's the major portion. The fundus is kind of this rounded portion at the top, and then you have um, the body. Now, um, you also have to think about the layers of the uterine wall. It has, uh, it's a muscular wall, and it has three layers. It has an outside layer, called which you would think of as like the visceral peritoneum, called the perimetrium, which is the outside layer. It has the muscular layer called the myometrium. And then the inside layer, which is what sloughs off every month during your period, the mucosal layer, is the endometrium. And the endometrium is continuous with the fallopian tubes. Okay? And you also have, uh, in the cervix, there are, there are some cervical glands that will make mucus, and that helps uh, kind of block the cervix from foreign invaders. So a cervical plug is something that you may have heard of before uh, during your female cycle. So the vagina is not very long. It's about 8 to 10 centimeters in length. It's very thin-walled. Uh, it's the birth canal. It's also the organ for copulation. So this is where the, the male uh, penis will, will go during copulation. Uh, it's between the bladder and the rectum, okay? And um, if you look, the urethra and the cervix kind of are parallel to each other. So let me go back to this picture here. And you can see, I need to get rid of some stuff. Mm, let's see, eraser. There we go. So here you have the vagina and then the urethra are kind of parallel to each other. Okay. So when you look at the vagina, it also has layers. Uh, it has uh, a fibrous outer layer. It has a muscle layer, a smooth muscle layer, and then it has a inside layer, which is made up of stratified squamous epithelium, uh, which has kind of a rough edges, what are called ruchi. And so that stratified squamous is there for protection because obviously if you think about intercourse, there's some friction going on, so it needs stratified squamous for, um, for protection. And also there are mucosal glands uh, involved for lubrication. Now, uh, before, of, uh, as a woman is growing, as a girl is growing, a lot of times there's a, there's a covering over the vagina uh, as a kind of a protective mechanism called a hymen. Uh, and that will eventually break and rupture. And some the girls, you know, may never even know they have one, and sometimes um, sometimes you do. But it will rupture um, for sure during the first intercourse. 
but uh, you may it may be gone even when you're four or five years old depending uh, on you know different people so it's not um, I always try to tell people it's not a sign of being a virgin or not if you have a hymen it really has nothing to do with that and again the vaginal fornix which are is those kind of blind spots around the top of the cervix all right so woo there's a nice picture so the external of uh, um, genitalia let's kind of go back we've talked about the parts so let's look at it from an actual model we don't have a lot of good models of this so you'll probably see a diagram very much like this save the mons pubis okay you have what's called uh, the um, uh, the vestibule which is going to be this entryway which is between the labia uh, minora so this is going to be a labia minora here and here these large skin folds are the labia majora um, you have the clitoris here, and it's got a little kind of old prepus or a little hood over it, over the, uh, over the glands clitoris. Uh, this is the urethral opening, so this is where urine comes out. This is the vaginal opening, and it, this one shows a ruptured hymen. Obviously, the anus is in the back. And so uh, this whole area, you know, is basically the external genitalia. Okay, so the vestibule is actually the space between the labia minora, which includes, which includes the, uh, or houses, I guess you could say, the clitoris, the external urethral orifice, and the vaginal um, orifice. So again, looking at the side, uh, you'll have your uterus. You can see the three layers inside, middle, and outside. So you remember what those are called? Endometrium, myometrium, and perimetrium. Again, you can see the internal uh, structures of the vagina here. The, bar, uh, the uh, greater vestibular glands, the labia minora, the labia, labia majora. You have these little fornices, the fornix, these little blind pouches here. You have the inside of the uterus. This is where the baby grows. You have the uterine tubes. You have this wide area called the infundibulum, the little fingers called the fimbriae, and the ovary. All right, so just another uh, picture as well. I, was, I wanted to just put this on here so that you would have as many options as you could as far as um, me testing you, as many diagrams as possible. This is a nice one because it has the layers of, of the wall of the uterus on it. Um, I don't talk a whole much, a lot about the broad ligament or um, you know any of these suspensory ligaments and that kind of stuff, so don't worry about that. Uh, just the ones I've actually listed. You don't need to know the arteries and the veins either. Uh, now we want to talk about the ovary because you want to talk about the different um, the eggs in the ovary and the follicles that the eggs are developing in. Uh, we do some histology in lab. So this is a section of an ovary where you can see uh, all the different stages of egg development and follicle development. And if you were to look at an actual ovary, you would see this because there's eggs and follicles in different stages of development all the time. And so if you look here around the edges, you have your primordial follicles, okay? Uh, here are some primary follicles. That means they've got that one ring of cells around the egg uh, or the oocyte. Uh, here's some secondary follicles. That means they have two rings around, um, around the oocyte. Uh, here's a mature follicle here. It means you have a big open space called an antrum. Here's your oocyte here. We're gonna talk about some more details. I've got another picture. In just a second. Here's a ruptured follicle, so you've got your um, ovulated oocyte. Once the oocyte ovulates, uh, the follicle will turn into what's called a corpus luteum, um, and then if there's no pregnancy, it'll become scar tissue called a corpus albicans. Okay, so um, you should have, uh, hopefully in your lecture, when you talked about oogenesis, you talked about follicles and eggs, you kind of understood the differences between pri primary and secondary oocytes and primordial follicles and uh, primary follicles and secondary follicles. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you kind of need to go back and, um, and cover that as well because I'm just going to do this briefly from a histology standpoint. So when you're looking at an ovary, you've got these embedded follicles. And so the primordial follicles are going to be small, and they're usually going to be in a, a group. So you're going to see a bunch of them kind of grouped together. So that's going to be the primordial follicles here. Uh, again, the primary follicles, you can see the oocyte in the middle and then a single row of cells. So think primary one, so one row of cells. Uh, in a secondary follicle, you have the oocyte and two layers of cells around that. 
if you see a lot of stuff around the oocyte, but it's you know you're, you're, it's looking like it's getting bigger, okay, then you're turning into a second a late secondary follicle because it's getting bigger and you're starting to see some spaces, and we call those spaces an antrum. Uh, this is an actual mature follicle. That means it's about to um, ovulate. So you have a nice big fluid filled antrum. You have your oocyte. You have all these uh, cells around it. And you've got some special features around the oocyte. You have what's called a zona pellucida, which is this white area around the egg. So pellucida means clear, so the clear zone. And then this, this um, group of cells around it is called the corona radiata. So things you need to be able to identify on a mature um, follicle would be the fluid-filled antrum. So this is what's going to help, like think about pop-up pimple. It's going to help pop out the egg. All right, so a fluid-filled antrum, you have uh, a, an oocyte, you've got a clear zone around it called the zona pellucidum, and then a, a um, corona radiata. And I kind of think of the corona radiata as like the eggshell. So when that oocyte uh, gets uh, ovulated, that's kind of protecting uh, the egg as it's traveling uh, and waiting for the sperm. So if you've talked yet about fertilization, you know the sperm's got to get through that thing, okay? Uh, this is showing where you've had ovulation, so this is going to be an ov a ruptured follicle where the egg is coming out. Again, you have your early and late corpus luteum, okay? And some histology slides here as well. So uh, if you don't see histology slides, then you may see it on a model. So here is an ovary. So the whole thing is the ovary. Here's your uterine tube with your infundibulum, kind of that wide area with the fingers, which are the fimbriae. Uh, here are the, uh, the primordial follicles. You've got some primary follicles. These are secondary because there's going to be, uh, I can see fluid-filled space in there, so I know that's a secondary uh, or mature um, follicle. Um, actually, it's probably a secondary follicle here. I can see space. This is going to be, a, these are mature follicles. Um, you're going to get the egg, which is being shown here, that's been ovulated out. So you have the actual oocyte, that 18, that zone, that's the zona pellucida, and then all this polka dot stuff. That's the corona radiata. Then you have your corpus luteum and your corpus albicans. So those are all uh, the different parts of the anatomy of the ovary. All right, so the last thing is going to be the mammary glands, and so we're talking about the breast tissue. And so if you remember from your early anatomy, you know that milk is just a modified sweat gland. Uh, and it's the mammary glands have a bunch of lobes in them that, that's used for milk production. Uh, we talk about the areola, which is the dark area around the nipple. So I'm going to show you all these structures. Um, I don't worry a whole lot about suspensory ligaments, but that's what um, basically attaches the mammary gland tissue to the underlying muscle. Uh, and so sometimes as your breasts start to sag during weight, those ligaments can start to loosen as well. All right, so let's talk about what we're seeing. So here's the breast tissue. You see these actual lobes, okay, here. Uh, this dark area is the areola, surrounds the nipple. So the, all this yellow stuff, that's fat. So what happens is uh, milk is gonna be made inside of these little alveoli. So these lobules contain little sacs, and that's where the milk is actually made these little uh, lactiferous alveoli. And so uh, the milk is going to drain from these alveoli into these lactiferous ducts. And these lactif lactiferous ducts will then end in these little bulges here called the lactiferous sinuses. And then it's going to leave through the lactiferous ducts out the nipple uh, to the, to the uh, awaiting mouth or breast pump. Uh, so, uh, when you look at breast tissue, the size of the breast is, is due to fat deposits. So, a, a large-breasted woman is not going to be able to nurse better than a small-breasted woman. That doesn't really uh, correlate with the size of the mammary glands. That's just more about breast tissue. Uh, so, what you need to identify on the models, again, is going to be the, lob the lobes of the, uh, the mammary glands, these uh, mammary gland lobes, these little alveoli, these lactiferous ducts that end in lactiferous sinuses, which then uh, takes it out to the nipple, and um, that's about it on the breast tissue. Uh, here's another picture, kind of a, it's a, a another version of this. You have the fat tissue here. You can see the lobules, these little individual things, or the um, alveoli, the little 
so the milk is made, the lactiferous uh, ducts and the sinuses, and then of course the nipple is right there. Now this one I'm showing you simply because, uh, you know, as females, one of the things that people worry about is breast cancer. And so this one is showing you uh, various types of pathologies um, in the human breast. And so here we have like a, a, um, a type of cancer, and you know it's cancer or tumor because you see a lot of blood and a lot of times uh, tumors have, are very vascular. Here's more like a fluid-filled cyst, which is um, uh, uh, indicative of just um, like this, people have cysts, that's not necessarily a tumor. And then we've got some just other little nodules here uh, that may or may not be cancerous. Uh, but I just, I just point these out to let you know that uh, you can feel these things. Like you can see here's, it kind of bulges out here, so you could feel a bulge. Um, here's a, a tumor here that's actually causing puckering on the breast, um, the skin itself. So girls, uh, you know your own breast, so you need to be doing breast exams monthly and uh, kind of making sure that you recognize lumps and puckering and um, discharge. If you're not pregnant and you're not lactating, you should not expect any discharge out the nipple. So just be your own best advocate. Um, I also like this, this model because you can see those individual alveoli, you can see the lobes, and you can see the lactiferous ducts as well. But just don't forget that you need to be doing those breast exams. Just one more time for me to remind you of that. All right, so let's look at the models quickly uh, and make sure that we can identify these things on the models. So we have the mons pubis. This is the uterus. A lot of times people get confused when they're looking in here because they think that's the bladder. The bladder is underneath there when you're looking at the model in this particular conformation. We have our uterine tubes. We have our uh, infundibulum with fimbriae. Here's an ovary. Okay, that's a ureter coming down. Uh, from this side, uh, you're just seeing uh, kind of the back side of this, of this um, um, ovary. That's actually not the best model. I should not even have that in there. All right, this was a better model. So here we have the bladder. We have the uterus. And you can see the uh, endometrium, the myometrium, and then the perimetrium. We have the fornices, which are those blind pouches. This is the vagina. You can see the internal rugi, the internal layer, and the muscular layer here. You can see the ovary, the infundibulum, I mean, I'm sorry, the fimbriae, the infundibulum, and the uterine tubes. Um, this is the clitoris, and the labia majora, and then the labia minora there. What else? Urethra. A lot of people get urethra and vagina confused, so figure it out. Here's the cervix, there. Uh, here's another model. So here you have the anus, the rectum. Here's the vagina, the nice fornix here, nice cervix, inside the uterus, nice uterus. Got your fundus, the round part, and then of course the body here, your bladder, your urethra. Um, I don't think any of them really show a good Bartholin's or a, a vestibular gland. I have to probably have to use a picture for that. Labia majora, labia minora. Oh, and that's it. All right, so uh, between this and then the video uh, that you have from, uh, I think Miss Graham does the female reproductive video, you should be just fine. All right, thanks a lot. Once again, have a good one.